Hi and welcome to Copying the Master. Today, we copy and ponder on Psalm 17. Is your heart troubled? Have others wrongly hurt you, blaming you with things you know are not true? What has your response been when pain surrounds your heart and your soul cries? Matthew Henry once wrote, Silent tears are not speechless ones. And as we continue to look at his commentary on the Psalms, we see that Psalm 17, once more, is David's cry to the Lord. A cry for God to remember, to remember the one who has chosen to walk in his ways, to remember and comfort the one whose soul is now under pain and suffering without fault. May the Lord bless you and speak his word to your heart as we paint and copy scripture today. Psalm 17, a Psalm of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord, Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the work of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand, O you who saves those who trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadows of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth, as a lion is eager to tear his prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down, deliver my life from the wicked with your sword, with your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life, and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possessions for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. This psalm is a prayer. For David, speaking to God was nothing new. No matter the circumstance, it was his way of life. There was now pain in his soul. He had a heavy heart, just as our own hearts can feel, from being mistreated and wrongly accused. But what is his response? With a sincere heart he pleads with God. He pours out the feeling of his heart to God, which he knew by faith that God would listen. I know you will hear me, and therefore God incline your ear to me. Have you considered that pretend prayers are fruitless? But if your heart leads your prayer, coming to the courts of heaven, seeking comfort from an omniscient, righteous God who sees all, a God whose judgment is according to truth? What is the answer? Is there no comfort from the Holy Spirit? God had tested David, and so when David thought about his ways of life to see if there were something that he did that would cause his pain, he could not find anything that his enemies blamed him with. In the hatred of Saul, the betrayal of his friends, and the many other challenges that were given to him in his life, David acted rightly. He did not kill Saul when he had the opportunity, or let anger rule over him, but walked in the ways of righteousness. When our hearts are in pain, what arises from us? Do we contemplate evil plans? Do we allow words of hatred to be addressed to the one who wronged us? Or are we like David? who says he has set his mind not to sin with his mouth, being careful with what his heart and lips say, choosing the right path. God's word gives us caution and directions. The ways of sin, on the other hand, are the paths of the destroyer, of the devil who ruins souls by drawing them into that path. We should not be surprised at hardships when we choose to walk in that way. But if we choose the way of the Lord, striving to walk in His ways, can we not more eagerly come to the Father, asking Him for justice and help? 
David continues with remembering the goodness and loving kindness of God. God is the protector and savior of his people, a people whose character is to trust in him. David chose the way of the Lord, but in his walk he also asked the Lord to keep his footsteps from slipping, because he knew himself. He knew his way was slippery, he himself was weak and could fall at any time. For there are many lions who lurk in secret places. Hold me, O Lord, that I may never say or do anything that looks dishonest and distrusting of you and your promises. For by your grace, O God, I have kept from the paths of the destroyer. By the same grace, will you continue to lead me in the paths of your will? Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Here we have a note of slight difference in translation. While the New King James Version says, with your sword, King James Version says, which is your sword. If you see everything in your life as from the Lord, you can understand the King James Version of Psalm 17, that even these enemies are from God himself. Not that God is evil or longs to punish you, but instead, because he is good that he longs to teach you. Therefore, we can patiently live through the suffering of other people, knowing that the suffering is a tool from God himself. Again, when our hearts and soul look upon the pleasures of those who choose not to serve the Lord, their outward prosperity can seem enticing. But we have to remember, those who choose not to serve God are men of the world. For earth is their heaven. The psalmist says, not knowing, they fill their bellies with your hidden treasures, treasures that are actually God's, for the earth is his and the fullness of it. And here lies the difference, the goal. Men of the world choose to fill their belly and not their soul. And so the psalm ends. The hurt soul and the pain of what others did is covered by the righteous God in the anticipation of the glorious day. When you find your own heart in pain from being wrongly accused, remember Psalm 17. Pray as David prayed. Commit your ways to God, trusting Him. For just as Christ endured the hardships and difficulties, being wrongly accused was not left in defeat. You also will not be left in defeat Remember you have chosen to walk in the way of the Lord. He will not leave you, he hears you, and he will be your comfort. Thank you for watching this video. If it has blessed you in some way, please share your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe and come back every Thursday at 9 a.m. for more art and scripture journaling as we paint that which we see and copy scripture to learn from God and his word. May God bless you as you seek him and glorify him in all that you do. See you in the next video.